Hey everybody, welcome to the second video in the build series for the 158cc rebuild of the 2016 Yamaha Zuma 125, which is not gonna be 125 anymore when I'm done. It'll be 158cc with a new injection and a cam and all sorts of cool stuff. If you need a little bit of catching up, there's a video right here where I disassemble and take the motor out. That's just the beginning. The engine actually came out a lot easier than I thought it would. We're at the part today where I have been having the most anxiety for, and that's taking the motor apart. I've never had a four valve head before. You know, it's a quality build Yamaha motor instead of a GY6. So really, I'm a little bit anxious, but we're gonna do it today. But before we start taking this thing apart, let's go ahead and roll that intro. So let's begin in just a second. I put the motor on the stand behind me, as you can see over here. It's not really a stand, it's my workbench, uh, which kind of sucks because it's hard to get camera angles when you have a pegboard in front of you. But yeah, we're gonna do whatever we can to make this look right. So we're gonna go ahead, take the motor apart, and kind of get a tour of what it looks like on the inside. For those of you who've never seen a, a, a single cylinder EFI Yamaha Zuma 125 motor. Anyways, let's get to it. All right, so after a lot of fear in this, I see I don't even wanna take this off because what if I forget how to put this back on again? So I guess what I should do is take the intake manifold off first. I don't know if it, you know what, let's, oh, I already got one that's gone, it's off. So let's take the other intake manifold off, the other bolt. What I wanna look for them in here is, is there any improve for improvement that I can do in here? And when I say room for improvement, what I mean is like, can I port, can I polish the inside of this to see if I can get like, you know, a little bit more power out of this intake manifold. Oops, I just tightened it. So on the throttle body, the opening on here, I do have some ideas of how I can open this up a little bit to, to maybe have a little bit better airflow on here, but um, I'm gonna save that for a different video. We'll go ahead, take off this intake manifold. Of course it has a, uh, a gasket and a spacer to help heat not transfer into the intake manifold. And this little foam thing, I guess it goes around the edge of it. I definitely see some opportunities on the inside for some porting and polishing. All right, now that that's off, I kind of want to see what's underneath this lid. I'm pretty sure it's the valves, or so you could do valve adjustment inside of here. Never actually, I know that Groms look like this with the little windows that you can do the valve adjustments on. I'm just gonna take one off to see if it's absolutely necessary for me to take them off right now. This is eight millimeter on here, and there's three valve adjustments look at that two of them oh you can't see it two of them in here so that's because this is a four valve head doesn't look like it's necessary to take the, oh you know what else i need to take the spark plug out i've actually never taken the spark plug out of this thing so we'll see what it looks like oh my gosh to be honest with you i've been very afraid to take this apart because it's it's different i was encouraged by slc uh, SLC ruckus that it it's not that hard so yeah look it's all paper paper bag cardboard brown so that looks great uh, I'm pretty happy with that the way that came out yeah that looks wonderful okay my exhaust bolts oh maybe I should take this lid off right here I think this is for the timing chain yeah so you can see if you're in time or not and I guess this is a kind of like your breather like on the cover of a GY6. There's also three in here also. No, I am not using power tools on here. There's a time and place for power tools. And when you're first doing something, 
on a motor that you've never worked on before, probably want to stay away from. There we go. That's what it looks like on the inside. Put that off to the side. Put the screws in here so I don't lose it. There's your sprocket and your chain. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some light <laughs> so I can see. Then when I look inside of here, I can see the mark for the timing chain. It's facing down. Let's at least get an idea of what it looks like. So right now, I have it on top dead center and that line is facing down. Okay, cool. I assume in order for me to take this off, I need to loosen the chain and take the sprocket out for the head. So 10 millimeter socket in the back. Assuming that's what this is. Timing chain tensioner. See, oh, yep. <laughs> I guess I could just remove the whole thing. Apparently I didn't do enough research when I was looking up this how to do it. I mean, I'm just taking it apart, right? So as long as I don't break anything on the way out, it should be okay, right? <laughs> right, timing chain tensioner removed. Oh, there's a reset. Oh, there you go. And then it doesn't go back in. So as the chain, oh, as the chain gets older, and the spring and it starts to sag it it tip it clicks out more for you kind of like on the the gti except for in the gti the chain gets so loose that it eventually falls out and messes everything up cool i like that that's a good design i'm gonna go ahead and put this the tensioner spring thing back in and pushed it all the way down well that's good whatever that's the way it's supposed to work all right next I have this side of the head, so we'll take this one out. There's two. I'm gonna have to torque wrench this stuff back together again. I really want this to be great. I really want this to be just as, as beautiful as I possibly can get it. So one gigantic bolt, two gigantic bolts. So, how many people are watching this trying to decide if this is something they want to do to their 2016 Zuma fuel injected? Uh, there's a guy, I think it's Casey. I think he paid somebody to do his and they did a wonderful job. So if you have a small engine mechanic that's nearby, maybe it might be worth it for you. Uh, so I think what I'll do next is I'll take the timing cover off, the cover off this so that I can loosen the chain because I'm pretty sure I can't pull this off without taking that off. Let's take a look one more time. You yeah, see the tensioners on the other side. Oh, that's the guide. The top was the tensioner. There's a nine on here. Pretty strong bolt. Hopefully I could take this off without power tools. You know what? I'm going to use a, an impact. See if I can pull that off. Well, before I use the impact, I'm going to try it with a regular wrench. Wait, I always get righty tighty, lefty loosey. Oh, it moves. I feel like I'm gonna break something if I push too hard. It's moving, stop moving. All right, you can get mad at me if I use an impact. Wait, am I going the right way? Yep. There we go. Bolt, cover, timing chain. Make sure I put this together in the right order so I remember which way it goes. I'm afraid this chain's gonna slide into something. So can I get this gear out? Oh, I was warned about this, saying there's not enough room for you to put your fingers and hold the chain at the same time. Uh, all right, for now, we're gonna keep it from sliding anywhere too dangerously. Kind of hold it in place with a zip tie for right now while we get the head bolts off. This will also be done with an impact. Ooh, cool. It's 
copper. These things are copper right here. Cross pattern. These must be really long studs. Wow. Okay, so I ran into a little problem. It's a little hard to take off and the impact was scaring me. There we go. A little bit of old school mechanics. Man, that scared me. I don't know if you remember from one of my Zuma videos, my other Zuma video, I had a head stud bend. All right, one more. Oh, how scary is that? I mean, what it, it wouldn't be an SE video if I didn't break something, so I wouldn't really be super surprised. Man, these copper, these copper washers, ugh, these copper washers are awesome. I've never seen copper washers. I mean, crush washers, yes. Put these somewhere safe and out of my reach. One, two, three, four. Uh, hello, where did it go? Oh, here, don't want to lose those. No idea how long it would take me to get a replacement. Okay, so it's loose. I'm gonna put my hand over here just in case the chain wants to slide in and take its life. Oh my God, how cool is this? I'm a small engine mechanic. Yes, look at me. Okay, old gear, zip tie. So don't lose this to the innards. Old gasket, let's peel that off. And we'll take the, are they on both on one side? Look at that, four valves. It's not even super dirty in here. I guess that's what happens when you have a thousand mile, <laughs> 1200 mile Zuma. Look at that, beautiful. Take the head gasket off. So let's take a moment here to take a look at the old, the new, the new, piece so it's not that much bigger you could tell they're both cast aluminum yeah cool maybe we'll get a little mallet and kind of give this a little bit of tapping oop I see it spacing out okay let's look over it one more time Maybe there's a bolt down here that I didn't see. Uh, no, no. Oh wait, does this hold? I don't know, let's take it off. There's a bolt right here, I don't know. Sorry guys, I did a poor job on the research on this. I just wanna make sure that this isn't, no, cause it's too high. There's no way it's holding the sleeve in somewhere, so no. <coughs> Sorry guys, I'm chicken right now. Like the last thing I want to do is break something. I don't have a lot of money to, to replace parts if I break them. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, look at us. We're taking stuff apart. There we go. Oh man, look at that. Los Piston has been El Removoed. That's Spanish. I'm gonna go ahead and set these. Oh, I broke the gasket apart. Uh, I'm gonna leave these pegs in here. Then here's my, here's my whatchamadoodle uh, guide for the bottom. The top one's the tensioner, which is connected back there. Uh, this is the old one, which by the way, I'm gonna try to turn this into something nice to put in my office. Or I'll keep it just in case I blow up this motor and I need it. So there, off to the side. Let's see if we can get some of this gasket off without dropping it in the motor. All right, let's take you off the tripod for a moment. Here is the piston. That's the top. The inside where the crank is, you can see kind of some of that gasket that needs some work. Actually, that's a gasket. That's just clean machine surface on here. So 
I thought I was super smart back then, but it looks like the pist the bottom of the piston ring is where that brown ring is. So I might have done a bad thing in the GY6 trying to make that a little higher, but okay, whatever. There's the chain tensioner, the the guide on the bottom, which I'll need to use again. But look at this four valve head, and it's huge. <laughs> look at that four valve head and it's heavy as crap that is my exhaust which if you look at it it looks like it definitely poured out some wider uh, the cover the valves so in this build it comes with a new cam that's more aggressive so this build is going to be a little more complicated because i don't know how in the world i'm going to get that cam out and put everything back together right so time to read some instructions but before we're done for the day we are going to take this piston off okay so pliers on the wall of tools let's get some light on here so you can see it really quick <laughs> make sure i'm pulling okay i see the clip there i only really need one clip removed so let's do the one that i can see all right. Oh, it's not a G clip. I thought it was going to be a G clip, but it's just a C. Probably some super, super strong, super alloy made for super scooters. <laughs> All right. Now that I got this side out, I should be able to push the piston, the wrist pin out. Okay. Wrist pin out. You know what I've noticed? in everything except for in a, a two-stroke and two-stroke motors on two-stroke motors the wrist pin has a bearing how come there's no bearings in gy6s and this motor you know uh, i'm also going to keep this so that i could have the uh the arrangement for the piston rings on here um, all this is getting replaced so there you have it guys i got it removed for the most part the rest of this gasket's really getting on my nerves okay it's it's, it's dark outside and late so i wonder if it's easy to mistake in the wrong gasket yeah look it's smaller it hangs over so this is obviously the head gasket all right so there we go we got the top end disassembled i was hoping to be able to start putting it together now, but it's dark outside. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. I'm gonna do some prep work, clean it up, and I'm gonna inspect the other pieces like the head and the intake manifold and the throttle body and see if there's any improvements I can make. If you like what you're seeing and you wanna see more of this particular series come through, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you know that other videos are coming out and you can watch this all the way to fruition. Anyways, thanks, and I'll see everybody in the next Zuma 158cc build.